Jerry at Fair Oaks. going, Jerry? To the infirmary. To the infirmary? What's the idea of going over there? Ah, uh, you'll see when we get there. <laughs> of all the mysterious guys, you're the worst. Can't you give me a little hint of what it's all about? Okay, I'll give you just one hint. It's about the talk I had with Captain Gardner last night, when they were bringing Red back to school. Your talk with Captain Gardner, huh? Yeah. Well, are you going over to see Paul Warren? Wait a minute. I've got it. <laughs> Think you have, huh? Uh, yeah, I'll bet you're going over to talk to Red Morris. No. Oh, for the love of Mike, Jerry, why don't you tell me? Because curiosity killed a cat, and I like cats. Hmm. You know, sometimes you can be the most... The most... Uh, aggravating is the word. Yes, aggravating, and believe me, you are it. <laughs> well, don't worry, you'll soon know a little roommate. <laughs> roommate, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, roommate, I turned out to be when you can't even take me into your confidence. Lee, if you don't mind, I'm still kind of thinking it out. Uh, just what I want to say when I get there. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I'll keep quiet. I don't know if this is going to work out or not. Well, as you say, don't worry. You'll soon know, little roommate. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. <laughs> well, here's a gym. Say, I wonder how Paul is. I bet he hates to be cooped up in there all the time, like you were after you saved Cully Newsom. Uh -huh. Hello, Jerry. Please. Oh, hiya, Hello, Pete. Pete. <laughs> Pete Armour's a swell kid, isn't he? Uh-huh. A good basketball player. Yeah, you bet he is. Well, here's the infirmary. Want to come in? Oh, I should say I do. What do you think I okay, came over? Okay, okay, come on. Hello, Dr. Campbell. Well, hello, boys. Hello, doctor. What can I do for you? Well, first, how's Red? Morrison? Mm hmm Oh, he's getting along fine. I examined him very thoroughly again this morning, and he hasn't any broken bones and no internal injury. Oh, gee, that's swell. Of course, he's sort of banged up with some rather painful bruises. He has a nasty lump on the back of his head. Well, what about the cut on his arm, doctor? Oh, that's nothing much now. Although you, Jerry, did save Morrison the loss of quite a bit of blood by applying that tourniquet. Well, uh, is he, uh, is he conscious yet? <laughs> as conscious as he'll ever be, I guess. <laughs> He's sleeping right now. Well, uh, Dr. Campbell, I wonder if it would be all right if we went in and talked to Paul Warren a few minutes. Oh, certainly. Paul's sitting in a chair near the window, reading some of his lessons, I think. Go right in, but talk quietly so you won't waken Morrison. All right, thank you, Doctor. Come on, Lee. Mm -hmm, right with you. Hello, Paul. Shh. Yeah, we know. How are you feeling by now, Paul? Oh, I'm feeling swell. Wish they'd let me out of here. Oh, how much longer do you think they'll keep you in the infirmary? Well, Dr. Campbell says about two more days. But I'll have to carry my arm in this bandage for quite a while. Gee, it'll be great to have you back in classes again. Yeah, and on the riding team, too. Thanks. Pull up those two chairs, fellas. Oh, thanks. <sighs> Say, Paul, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> of course not. What about? Well... What do you think they ought to do to Red? Do to him? Yeah. Do you think they ought to send him home now? They can't demote him any lower, and they can't take away any more privileges or anything like that. What kind of punishment do you think he should have now? Well, I didn't know they were figuring on doing any more punishing. Don't you reckon he's had punishment enough? Golly, I knew you'd say that. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Now, I'm going over and tell Major Davis that both you and me... Well, we think Red's had punishment enough and that we're ready to forget everything he's done to either of us. Is that okay with you? You bet it is, Jerry. I'm with you all the way on that. 
I'm going to have a chance to talk with Rev quite a bit while he's in here the next day or two. I'm going to set out to do my level best to show him that he's been off on the wrong foot all along. Well, that's swell, Paul. Hmm, I think it's pretty swell of both of you myself. If I'd been on the receiving end of Red Morrison's dirty tricks as much as you fellas have, well, I don't know whether I'd be willing to forget it as easily. Oh, yes, you would, Lee. You know you would. But anyway, I'm going right over now and talk with Major Davis if I can get in to see him. I want to get to him before he and the rest of the faculty decide to do anything to Red. You know, the the way I look at it is this. Fair Oaks is supposed to make men of us. When we graduate, we're supposed to be able to go out into the world and live with other people. Isn't that right? I bet it is. Well, then if Major Davis was to send Red home now, Fair Oaks would have failed in his case. That's absolutely right, Jerry. I, for one, don't want Fair Oaks to fail in anything. You bet. Well, okay, and, and thanks, Paul. Come on, Lee. You want to go with me over to Custis Hall? Mm-hmm, sure. I'm on my way to English class anyway. All right. Well, thanks again, Paul, and goodbye. Hope you're out soon. Yeah, so do I, Warren. Thanks, Jerry and Lee. Be seeing you soon. Bye. You didn't stay long, did you, boys? No, but we found out what we wanted. What was that, Jerry? Oh, I haven't got time to tell you right now, Doctor, but you'll know soon. <laughs> All right. I'll be anxious to know what it is. Goodbye, boys. Uh, goodbye, Doctor. Hmm. That was your swell up, Paul, wasn't it? Mm, if you ask me, it was pretty swell of you, too, my friend. Oh, well, after all, nothing really happened to me except a couple of days of worrying. But Paul actually got hurt. Mm-hmm, I know. Well, what do you think you're going to say to Major Davis? I don't know yet. I guess I'll just have to figure that out when I get there. Oh, gee. What's the matter now? Well, I just happen to think. What if all the rest of the faculty are there? What if they're all deciding Red's case right now? What if they are? What difference does that make? Well, I don't think I'd like to have to talk to the whole crowd at once. If it's just Major Davis, I think I can say what I have to say. But the Captain Gardner and Captain Bogart and Captain Rowland and all the rest of them are there. Step <laughs> out of it. You'll be all right. Well, I hope so. Sure you will. Uh-oh, there's the bell. Say, I'll go over to the West Wing for my English class. I'll see you in the room later, Jerry. Okay. I'll be anxious to know how you come out. How are you, Dugan? Oh, hi, Butler. Looks like you're in a rush. I am. Well, here goes. Enter. Major Davis, sir. Yes, Cadet Dugan. Cadet Dugan would like to talk with Major Davis, if you please, sir. Well, certainly, Dugan. Come right over here. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Now, now what's on your mind? It, well, it's about Red. I mean, Cadet Morrison, sir. Oh, I see. Well? Well, sir, I, I kind of thought that... Well, because I'm sort of the cause of all his trouble... And... Uh, what, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, it, it's kind of hard to explain, sir, but it, it's something like this. Jerry, you go right ahead and talk. Never mind about formalities. Thank you, sir. Well, if Mr. Randall hadn't uh, sent Splendor here to Fair Oaks, Red would never have wanted to ride him, and he never would have loosened the cinch strap on Splendor that day. And, and Paul Warren wouldn't have had that accident. Yes, sir, that's it. Mm -hmm. So? So, well, I just wondered if I could find out what's going to happen to Red. Oh, I see. Jerry? Yes, sir? I want to read you two telegrams. One for me to Red's father and Mr. Morrison's reply to me. Yes, sir. Now, let me see... Oh, yes, yes. Here they are. Now, this is my wire to Mr. Morrison. Yes, sir. Your son... No, no, I shan't bother to read that one. It just tells Red's father what his boy did, and it ended asking Mr. Morrison to remove Red from Fair Oaks Military Academy so that it would not be necessary for me to expel him. Oh, gee, I, I mean... Uh, here's Mr. Morrison's reply, Jerry. Your telegram received concerning my son. I realize how trying this must be for you and the Fair Oaks faculty. I realize also that my son must be, as he has always been, a tremendous problem to those who try to control him. It is, however, my earnest wish and fervent hope that you and your staff may be able to retain Red and make of him the man I desire him to be. I know you can do more for him there than I can. So, so you're going to have to expel Red. Is that it, Major Davis? Well, inasmuch as you're quite directly involved in this whole matter, Jerry, what would you do if you were in my place? Well, sir, I, uh, may I stand up? Well, of course, my boy. Thank you. Well, I hope this won't sound... Uh, uh, impertinent? Yes, sir. You go right ahead, Jerry. Speak your mind. That's what I'm here for. Major Davis, I've just been over to the infirmary to see Paul Warren. 
Paul and I talked this thing over, and we think Red Morrison should stay at Fair Oaks. Oh, why do you think that? Because, well, in the trophy cabinet just outside your door, there are a lot of cups and plaques and things that cadets from Fair Oaks have won in the past. They won those trophies for making good in football and basketball and riding and debating and, and everything. Mm -hmm, that's right, and we're very proud of them. Yes, sir. Well, Paul and I think that there's something a lot more important to Fair Oaks than those plaques and cups and things. Oh, you do? And uh, what's that? It's, it's, well, it's turning out cadets who are men, just like Red's dad said in his telegram. We, Paul and me, we think that if Red could stay at Fair Oaks now, now that he's gotten into this mess and now that he's had this accident himself, we think that if he could stay, he'd have learned his lesson. We think that the boys at Fair Oaks could help Red see that he's been off on the wrong foot all this time and that he's been, well, that he's had the wrong a attitude. Paul and me, well, we'd like to help. Paul's going to talk to Red while they're both in the infirmary the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So you think Red Morrison should stay at Fair Oaks, Jerry? Huh? Yes, sir, we do. Uh-huh. Well, about 12 years ago... We had a boy here at Fair Oaks, very, very much the same type of lad as Red. He came to us from an extremely well-to-do home. He'd been pampered all his life, given anything he wanted when he wanted it, without any thought of ever earning through his own efforts. He did a trick very much the same as Red did. He was jealous of another boy who had been elected football captain, and he purposely set out to rough that other boy so hard in practice that the other lad wasn't able to play the big game against Edson. Gee, well, did you expel him? No, we didn't, Jerry. We kept him on. Demoted him, of course, and took away all privileges, including the game he loved so much, football, and in his senior year. It wasn't long before that boy came to know the bitterness of defeat, of the disrespect of his fellow cadets, and the absolute necessity of sportsmanship in everything he did. That boy's name, Jerry, was Donald Craig. Craig? Craig? Oh, gee, Craig Field. That's right. Don Craig went out from here, went to college, became one of the country's greatest halfbacks, and now he's one of the country's greatest coaches. About three years ago, he gave Craig Field to Fair Oaks. He learned how to be a man. Do you think Red Morrison will be able to learn? Oh, yes, sir. Paul Warren and me both think so. Mm -hmm. Well, Jerry, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You and Paul are taking on quite a responsibility. But I'm going to leave this in your hands. I shan't expel Red as long as you've made a plea for him and as long as you and Paul agree that you'll do everything you can to help Red. Thank you, sir. May I, may I go over and tell Paul? No, no, Jerry. I want to have a little talk with Red Morrison myself first. And we'll keep this little conversation of ours between ourselves for a day or two, eh? Yes, sir. Thank you, Major Davis. That's all right, Jerry. Thank you.